All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of Bench Talk. Uh, that's Tom Abano. I'm Nick Morgison. There's a big topic going on in the world of sports, and it's the Redskins, or if you want to call them the Washington No Names, if that's a better way you want to refer to it. But joining us now is uh, ben, ben Standig, who writes for The Athletic. He covers the Redskins and the Wizards, and uh, mostly talking uh, Redskins. Well, maybe we'll do a little NBA later, but I want to get into it. But first, Ben, thanks for joining us. Hey, uh, th thanks for having me. It, every time I do one of these things now, I forget that my hair is an absolute disaster these days. So I hope you appreciate it. I hope you're cool with the, with the hat. <laughs> it's all good. We get it. We all have uh, hat hair. But yeah, I, sat, since New York barbers here, like they open on uh, this week, like Saturday, I have to finally get my first haircut in like four months. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm I, control right now. Time, it's been something. But all right, so let's get into the the issue or controversy, if you would like to call it. What is your opinion on the Washington D.C. franchise? I guess if we don't want to call it the Redskins right now. What's my opinion on them in terms of like everything, or just we talk, or just in terms of like this particular aspect? I guess the aspect, like the name. Yeah. <sighs> wow, where to begin? Um, look, obviously, I think there's a big wave going on in this country right now when it comes to race relations and the conversation and those types of conversations and the difference I've been sort of saying with the Washington Redskins now versus all the other times that has come up, particularly in the last decade is when it really had some, uh, some larger uh, conversation, some push nationally is that it was always done previously in isolation that it was just that one topic. And ultimately, as we know how these things go, there was no real money pressure for owner Dan Snyder to make a change. The NFL was not pressuring him publicly. Sponsors were not pressuring him publicly. And while there were people, you know, opinion columnists and some others doing it, I don't know the locals were necessarily, which isn't to say that anybody isn't down, is, is you know, saying the name is not an issue. I don't think it's that. But like as somebody who grew up here, this was the team of my youth. This is what you know, right? This is the team that you were told to root for. I mean, th this was the name, right? So. I don't honestly, in my heart of hearts, don't think most people around here are like, boy, this name, you know, I don't know, the heck with everybody. They don't know what they're talking about. I don't think any of us view it in those terms. And it makes this whole conversation sort of odd because you're on the inside going, wait, we're not, we're not having an issue with this. But I, again, I understand the larger conversation. And if they had ever wanted to make the change at any point in the last 20 years, for me personally, I would have been like, I totally get it go ahead. I, um, so I think the owner Dan Snyder was not interested in making this change. He said so publicly. He's been very emphatic about it. But the difference became the, the NFL and the sponsors could no longer ignore it because there is this larger movement happening as we see all over the country. And from that led to to where we are, that it was there was no out. Once the sponsor started saying, you got to make a change, there was nothing else to do. And that got us that got us to here. Right. You mentioned the uh, sponsor and sponsors, of course, are the big things when it comes to uh, movements like these changes like these in sports. Um, obviously, we have the motivation from FedEx and the minority owners, of course, are also dropping out. Um, but what makes this version of the movement? Um, what makes this version of the movement different from the previous versions in that this one, it appears to be coming successful. As we mentioned, there is a big focus on a social movement in this, a big social movement in this country right now. Uh, and can you attribute that maybe to the fact that we're in quarantine and so we have had no sports for months and now there is more room, more time to focus on these social issues at hand? Sure. I mean, I think it's probably fair to say, it's pretty obvious, I think that George Floyd's murder at the hands of uh, Minneapolis police officers sparked something in this country. And Unfortunately, he was not the first black man to uh, be, be killed by a, by, by a police officer. We've had these conversations before. But to your point about with the coronavirus, I think my take, I'm not a political uh, scientist or, or anything, but like, although I did, I was a sociology major, so who knows what that means. But the fact that this happened when we were all stuck in our house and we had already been stuck in our houses for a while and everybody was angry and frustrated just at the world, let alone a specific topic, that when that happened and we all could be home and watch it, we weren't busy, we weren't distracted like we are normally, 
We weren't running to watch games, go to the go to happy hour, uh, you know, all, all the things that, that we deal with typically. We all connected on that moment and saw it. And that led to a spark. But that it didn't end there. It led to a lot more. Those protests went on for several weeks, some of them here at, at, at uh, in D.C., some of them including players on the team. And one thing to that point was when they had um, – uh, one day on Twitter, I forget what day when it was, but there was a movement one day to support Black Lives Matter to have, if you were going to do that, put up a a, a, a a black image of just a straight black image on your screen. Nothing else needed to be said. It was going to support the movement. And the Washington Redskins Twitter feed did that. But because it's got this name, people, some people were like, well, well wait. And one of the, what, what's going on here? One of those people was, uh, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, the congresswoman from New York, she quote tweeted that tweet and said some version of, hey, uh, if you guys really want to help re race relations, why don't you change your own name? And from that moment on, to me, it connected to this larger issue. And that's the thing, because in before, they could always just kind of get by with, again, what's the pressure, ultimately? Yes, some columnists said some things, and some other people who weren't paying the bills anyway were saying some things, but this led one domino led to the other. And like I said, throughout, I mean, you know, it goes back to even a few weeks ago when several star NFL players, including Patrick Mahomes made that video saying that we're not going to stand for any more police brutality, which was, was you know, the Colin Kaepernick um, push several years before, which the NFL did not seemingly get behind, not seemingly they didn't immediately right after that happened, Roger Goodell comes out, puts out a video and says, we're behind it. And that showed what kind of change was happening in this country. And I think this was ultimately you know, another part of that. So for those who aren't familiar with the Indian or Native American culture, and also we're seeing a lot of cancel culture, whether you want to say that's in movies or sitcoms, we're seeing people getting canceled for a lot of the issues going on. But now we're seeing with the Redskins name being an issue, we, we could say the Indians, the Chiefs, the Braves, the Blackhawks, I can probably go on and name hundreds of teams. But where do you draw the line between what is just a team name and what is a team name based on slur, stereotype, or racism? Uh, you know, uh, it's a great question. I think this is, a, is a, a question that really connects when we talk about people taking down the monuments and statues around the country. Um, because it started with the idea of taking down things that were connected to the Confederacy, which were people against the United States of America. Totally makes sense. But then it started going beyond that. And now there's even question where I live, Washington, D.C. Hey, there's a Washington monument. George Washington had slaves. Is that appropriate? And they're like, well, that's a different conversation because the world was what it was. How do you judge the, a, a world 200 something years later? It, things are different. There are things that we're doing today that people in a hundred years from now will say, can you believe what those monsters were doing? Like what is happening? So it is a tricky situation with, I thought one thing that was very interesting with regards to this particular topic with the Washington Redskins team name was simultaneous to their announcement. The Cleveland Indians came out and said, they also put their name under review. Now I didn't hear anybody. I, I don't think say that the Indians name itself was an issue. We knew that the met their, their, cartoonish mask uh, logo was, and they did get rid of that a year or so before. Chief so, Otto, yeah. So, yeah, so I didn't, so that became like, well, wait, so are, are we saying that all Native American imagery is is is, is taboo? And, okay, I, I mean, uh, this is the, this is something that's happening now with a lot of conversations in this country. Everything is right now very blurry in terms of what's the line. And I don't even know if there should be a line on a lot of things. There should be conversations, I think, constantly. But the question right now is things are moving so fast. What is the what is the line is a, is a, a reasonable question to ask for better or for worse, because everything doesn't necessarily need to, to change or, or, or whatever overnight. But some things do. I totally get, like I said, why people want to change change this team's name. Um, but, yeah, where, 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 where does it go? And obviously, if we're talking Native American imagery, Florida State Seminoles, Kansas City Chiefs, Atlanta Braves, what have you. So you know, that's going to come up down the line. And, and to that point with this team, it's not just a matter of, okay, fun, are you changing the name, but what to what? And, you know, are you going to keep it with th that Native American imagery or are you doing something else? A lot of people had been think thinking the Warriors, there was some reasoning for that locally. And if you did that, you could potentially keep the, 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 the just leave everything else, but change the name. 
But that to me seems somewhat problematic if we're saying sort of culturally, no, 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 we really kind of want to move away fr from all of these things. So it's definitely a, 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 a question better answered by people uh, uh, smarter and, and more versed in these topics than me. But yes, it is, a, it is definitely an interesting discussion point for sure. So now there was this poll from like years ago that supposedly 60% of Native Americans didn't weren't offended by the name, but then you have this recent study from the UC Berkeley that says that like half half Native Americans do find it offensive, and the more somebody is into their culture, the more the bigger the chance they do find it offensive. So what do you believe? Do you believe one or the other? Do you think there's some middle ground between all these studies and and polls? Uh, yeah, it's it's. Um... Some good questions. My direct boss at the Athletic is uh, David Aldridge. Um, you know, people know him from uh, from being in video games, um, <laughs> among other uh, other exploits. Um, but he wrote a column the other day, right before all this happened, right before FedEx, but I had a and before the Redskins did as well. And he basically, in terms of some of these studies, he cited them, acknowledged that they existed, but also said that there were, you know, some methodology questions, I guess with how these things were conducted, were all the people who were claiming to be Native Americans actually, or did they just sort of were told at some point they were? All that aside, I guess the larger question is if 10% are offended, if 30% are offended, if 80% is offended, what's enough? Is 10% enough? If, if, if enough people say, hey, this is terrible, we should get rid of it, should you get rid of it? You know, probably the answer is yes. So, I, you know, and this is the, the people, the fans and others who are pushing back on this idea of a name change have cited these polls and say, see, Native Americans are not um, are, are not offended. I will say anecdotally, I talked to somebody a week or so ago um, and they told me that they've got um, Native American heritage in their family, that their grandparents were, uh, you know, spoke, spoke the language of the, of, the, of the tribe that they belong to. And that they grew up in a, in a part of the country where um, the, the 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 Redskins name was prominent, and they they themselves did not find it offensive. Does that mean that everybody doesn't? Obviously, no. It's not universal, and I think that is also part of what makes this somewhat a confusing topic. I think we're all learning a lot, a lot to be honest, about how we as a society have to function together and, and how to think about these things to try to get out, get out from your own head. But I guess, like I said, at the end of the day, whatever the polls are, I, you know, if an, it's one thing to say 70% of the people believe uh, we should have every Friday off and you decide as a government to, to, to enact that or something. Okay. But it's another thing if it's 30% of the people find something highly offensive. I mean, I don't think that's the same thing to say, well, the majority is cold that therefore, screw it like this is something else so you know i i, I guess that the polls do matter and i think they were something that dan snyder could lean on up until now but uh, at the end of the day enough people have issue with it clearly uh talking to ben standig of the athletic uh out in washington dc to your knowledge how many redskins players are in favor of the name change uh, I, I don't know. The, teams, the, the players have been very quiet, as far as I can tell. I mean, I think I saw Dwayne Haskins right when it kind of happened, sort of throw out a couple name, uh, new names. Uh, uh, you know, look, I, I think the players on the team, at the end of the day, it, this is a bigger deal, I think, for fans and people who are long timers. The, the players, even those who will be here for you know their whole careers, you know, five to ten years, you know, the, the, it's different. They're they're getting a check from that place. It's not like. I, when you're a fan, your connection goes much deeper than a paycheck, right? So it is a bigger deal, I think, on that front. So I, I, the players haven't said anything. I think one thing, though, that's important for this franchise is they need to figure out – I don't. they don't necessarily need to have a new name, in my opinion, before training camp starts, but they need a plan because one of the issues has been that Dan Snyder does not talk. He's He doesn't give interviews, hasn't for some time. And then based on the offseason shuffling that they did, Ron Rivera was left as the only real person to talk to. He is the head coach, but he was given more power than just that. There is no team president. There is no general manager. So if the owner doesn't talk, then the coach has to. And if the coach isn't that excited to do it, guess what? We're going to ask the players. And I don't think this is, this is where things become problematic for the team. You don't want the players talking about this. I mean, especially at a point where you haven't changed the name, right? You haven't made it. You haven't said you're going to do it. I mean, I think they need to come out and say, look, we, you know, we respect the fact that some, you know, that, that there's a push for this to happen. We're committed to doing it, 
we want to do this right. We want to come up with a new name that fans can be proud of, that our, our city can be proud of. That may not happen by week one. There's a lot of logistical hoops that need to go through this. And we're going to figure something out. I guess you could hypothetically drop the nickname for a year and just go with just Washington. But beyond that, I would hope, maybe I'm naive, I would hope that that would be enough to to, to sort of satisfy people and kind of move forward. But I think whatever they do, they have to come up with some sort of plan before training camp starts because obviously these questions are not going away and they're only going to intensify and it will only get worse if they don't have a have a plan in place. Now, speaking of Dan Snyder, uh, do you think he is serious about uh, seeing this change go through or do you think that this is at least in part a way to just rehabilitate his own image? <clears throat> Well, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know enough to know what his what's in his heart of hearts. I mean, I the, the name change will happen. I, I'm not saying that because somebody told me that. I'm saying that you can't come out and say we're putting this under review and then not do it. You know, you could say, hey, you know, we're thinking about making a quarterback change. You know, we, we're not sure if we want to go with Dwayne Haskins. Maybe we go with Kyle Allen. And then four days later, say, no, nah, we're good. We're going to go with Dwayne Haskins. You can't take a, con- a topic this controversial. <laughs> and come out and say, yeah, we thought about it. We changed. We're not going to. We decided we're good. That's not happening. So they're going to make the name change. Whether he's doing it though because he and his he really believes that this is the right thing to do, or because he's looking at financially his bottom line and seeing all the sponsorship money potentially going away. And yeah, I mean, at some point, I mean, Dan Snyder is already not a popular owner in the, in town and in professional sports. You can only, you know, I don't know if you can make things worse. But going down a path of ignoring this moment, this movement would, would do that. So, you know, for whatever his motivations are, you know, it, it only seems like there's going to be one possible outcome at this point. Now, a lot of people have, an, in, like you said, an interesting perception of Daniel Snyder. Do you know whether he's actually a nice guy behind the scenes or does he put on a public persona to look nice? Or can he actually be a nice guy when there's not cameras and media on him? I mean, I'm sure there are people that say you know nice things about him. Uh, Matthew McConaughey is a big fan of the team, and they've been seen together uh, in the owner's box and some other times. McConaughey last year for the uh, kickoff uh, luncheon they had before the right before the season started, McConaughey was the uh, keynote speaker, as it were. Uh, so obviously, I'm sure he would say that Dan Snyder is a good guy. But by and large, the stories you hear are not of that, are, are not of a guy. That that is gets high marks. We'll say so. I I, I can say I've never I've never uh, talked to him directly. I only go off of what you hear. But obviously, this isn't just a rumor about some random you know person that you kind of know. This is a public figure who's been in the public space for 20 years. Who person after person after person has written not good things and said not good things about him. So at some point you have to kind of buy into that. And look, part of it also is he doesn't talk. So he doesn't give he doesn't help his own cause in that front by giving off any other image other than the one that we have already. So, yeah, no, he's uh, I don't think there's going to be a lot of people lining up to say that he's a he's a he's a good guy. Definitely more on the other side. So now moving away from Washington specifically for a second here, the taking into account um, covid and taking into account uh your best estimation of the NFL's timeline, as you know, Roger Goodell is pushing for everything to start on time. Do you think that's actually going to happen, that we will start on time and we will play a full NFL season? Um, uh, you know, I, I go back to where my thinking was back in March when this all unfolded. Um, and, you know, we're all just like, baffled by what is happening to our country. The fact that, you know, sports were shut down. We're all locked in our house. What's happening? And only thing I could come up with at that moment, I think still for me kind of resonate, resonates now. And that is, I just don't know how any of this works without a vaccine. And we kind of keep seeing this over and over again play out right now in sports when you have these breakouts. I mean, I, I'm not really in, uh, paying too much attention to the MLS, but it feels like a couple teams have now bailed on whatever they're trying to do because p- players have tested positive. Uh, you see colleges when, when they're starting to bring some people together, uh, you have waves of people testing positive. Obviously the NBA is about to uh, start bringing p- teams and players into this bubble in Orlando with the idea of playing games in a few weeks. I, I, I again, I, I'm, I, I'm not, it's, 
just testing positive is obviously not, I mean, I don't want to test positive. So not testing positive is, is part of the story, but everybody is fearful of this. I mean, even the, you know, the, I think it's been proven now over time that it, it does affect young people as well. I know that was the, narr the, the opposite narrative earlier on. So you thought, okay, well, these athletes could get by, but that's not the case now. And even the ones who are in really good shape, there's other underlying issues that they may have that could lead to things. There's other people who have had no underlying issues that have led and have had some problems. So I guess the bottom line is I just don't know how you move forward with this. I mean, especially if you're talking professional football, like, I mean, how do you, how do you really, you can't, there's, there's no social distancing remotely possible. You're all over each other. And it just seems like something is going to happen. I'm hoping it's not the worst case scenario that somebody contracts it, gets really sick and dies. But I can't, we can't, I don't think, I don't think anybody's going to rule that out. And once somebody starts getting sick or multiple people or, or a bunch of people on a team or whatever, I just don't know how the, who, ha, we'll see who has the stomach to keep moving forward. I, 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 the, I'll just say in terms of the NFL specifically, they, they seem to keep going with the stiff upper lip. They keep trying to talk about moving forward, but you know, in talking to some people, I think there's definitely becoming more and more of a concern that that doesn't seem realistic. Uh, final question, Ben, and we really appreciate you spending the time with us. Um, you started to bring up the NBA, so we'll throw one quick NBA question. Now that we've seen the, the 22 teams are all eventually making their way into the bubble, and actually with the Washington connection, we saw Bradley Bill is going to be out with the injury and not going to be in the restart. With some of the different players not being involved, like you said, we see positive tests. What do you think of the Orlando bubble? Well, look, obviously, you know, while we typically talk of uh, this of the coronavirus from a health standpoint, there's obviously so many other factors. I mean, this, are we, we, we're not going to have a real full grasp of how this has affected society in so many ways for months, maybe maybe even longer. And it affects people in, in, in ways of, you know, alcoholism and drug abuses on the rise. I'm sure other kinds of abuses are as well. Uh, and obviously the economic Im impact is a big deal. And uh, we, you know, we, we see all over the place. I mean, just today, uh, Brooks Brothers, a 202 year old fashion, men men's fashion store is closing because of this, I presume. Uh, and so obviously these leagues are doing what they're doing because there's a lot of money in play. Now, at least with the NBA and the NHL, they got through, you know, 85, 90% of the season they, they're just trying to figure out this last piece so they can get this TV money. And they've come up with this bubble situation. Look, I, I think you, everybody's hoping for the best. I think their intentions are as good. If they really wanted to be, keep everybody safe, they would just bail. So that they're not obviously doing that. So I, look, I, I, you just hope they're doing the right thing. Obviously I get, there's a lot of concerns and I wouldn't feel great if, if the athletics said to me, Hey, do you want to go cover this thing? I, I don't know. It'd be exciting. It'd be fun. It'd be a once in a lifetime experience, but there's definitely a lot of concern. So I, I mean, personally for me, I know we're all focusing on what's happening today because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. But I think the more interesting part, particularly with the NBA and the NHL, is what happens next season. Because you can get, like the NFL could probably get by financially with fans never show up again. I don't think you can with the NBA and the NHL. The NBA, NFL has the amazing TV contract. The NBA and the NHL get money from TV, but the, the the gate is a big deal. And if there's no fans able to go to games next year, whenever that starts, I really wonder what's going to happen there. It could even be potentially some teams folding or having real hardship. I, I don't know. I mean, uh, so uh, I, I think we have a long way to go, even though this is all happening right now and we're interested to see what happened to this bubble. But I, I think it just is, it's, it's the first step towards a long process of how on earth is everybody going to be do all these things in a reasonably safe way? And realistically, they these businesses have to figure out how to how to make money, or it all doesn't work. So it's really tough for everybody. There's no good options, and you know, just got to hope for the best. A lot of controversy and a lot of tough discussions with the Washington Redskins uh, renaming movement. A lot of uncertainty when it comes to the quarantine and everything going on in sports. Ben, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Ben. Hey, guys, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Good luck. Uh, stay safe. Absolutely. You too. You too.